What's going on everyone? My name is Nicholas Merton here at Data Dash, and today is July 23rd of 2020. Well folks, I hope you are having a fantastic day wherever you are, and as you can probably tell from the title, and I really mean it, this time right here right now is the time to be focusing in on the markets that we've been covering over the last three years here on the Data Dash channel. Predominantly cryptocurrencies such as Bitcoin and also along with that as well precious metals like gold and silver. So I'm going to go ahead and cut straight to the chase here. I don't want to take a look at the daily price action here. I want to focus on the longer term trend of price and what we're already seeing here that's already quite impressive, but also dive into the macro trend as well. So many people haven't really been pointing this out here, but right now Bitcoin is resting a little bit above $9,600. And if we're taking a look at the long-term chart here, we're looking like we might actually be setting the first weekly close above this line of resistance that's been building up since back in December of 2017, meaning that Bitcoin is not broken above and held above this line of resistance ever since then. This is extremely significant in the sense of the long-term trend for Bitcoin. And as we've been talking about, you know, no matter if it just takes off like a rocket or comes up a little bit here, maybe towards 11 or 12,000 and comes down to make that resistance new support before taking off, it doesn't really matter. So long as we get the weekly close above this and maybe even a second weekly close, the more we hold above this yellow line here, the more confident we can be that we're kicking off the next cycle, or at least the major move for the next cycle to revisit the all-time highs and break out to even newer highs in this case. So really exciting stuff here. Outside of that as well, it's not just Bitcoin. We're also seeing this within the altcoin market. In Ethereum here, we can see that we've gotten back up to the line of resistance of the ascending triangle that we've been building up since all the way back here in 2020. And the price performance is looking phenomenal. If you're looking at the right exchanges, the volume is coming in quite strong. And outside of that as well, just taking a look at the historic price action here, this looks like this is about to take off for the next cycle here. We got our technical pattern building up over a multitude of quarters here. And now we're really ready to see Ethereum rip higher. Now, it's important here that we see Ethereum move higher because at the end of the day, we want the broader altcoin space to move. And we've already seen very clearly here on the long-term chart that we had broken above the line of resistance that was held back since all the way in January of 2018, a very clear monthly breakout. If you break it into the daily and weekly, you can see the trend as well. There was a weird uh, kind of glitch here on the chart for total market cap. But ignoring that here, we can see that we pushed sideways after breaking through and we've just continued to build dominance here for altcoins. Now, this isn't per se bad about Bitcoin, right? This isn't something to bash Bitcoin, but more specifically, it's something showcasing that risk taking and excitement is coming back to the cryptocurrency space. So again, we could dive into a ton, of, a ton of different individual plays here, but to save ourselves on time, obviously we've got tons of videos for those of you who are watching this video and don't watch frequently. We've been co covering a lot of the best performing cryptocurrencies here on the channel, but it's not just crypto that's going up. It's also what's happening in commodities, more specifically precious metals. Gold here teetering right on the verge of breaking towards 1900. Now, why is this significant? Well, it's not only very close to the overall highs that gold set back here in 2011, around $1,900, uh, but along with that as well, we're also seeing that this, if this weekly or excuse me, monthly close happens, this is going to be the highest monthly close for gold in history. And that's assuming that over the next 10 days, we might not, you know, again, continue to pick up even higher than where we are right now. We might break all the way up here. There might be a bit of FOMO over the next few weeks to break up all the way to 2000. But the momentum is really showcasing here. And I think if you need a chart to kind of convince you, you know, sorry, I have my gold chart here on the logarithmic. This is a little bit more of a, a clear telltale sign of the wedge break here and the lead up higher. Take a look at silver. Silver came down to historic resistance, made it support for the third time since back here in 2015, broke through the parabolic line of resistance, and has now broken through the secondary line of resistance that's been historic all the way back since 2008. And we've got a very clear breakthrough here, well above that line of resistance. Now, even just turning off my drawings, does this chart look bearish or bullish to you? I'll put it off the logarithmic as well, just to showcase the scale here. This to me looks like exactly what happened back here in 2010. We're kicking off the next commodity cycle. And if you take a look at the gold to silver ratio, it looks exactly like what happened here back in 2008 going into 2010. We see the initial squeeze where gold continues to scale up to higher levels and then an eventual breakdown 
where silver starts to dominate. Again, both commodities prospered. They both did well and climbed to new all-time highs, but silver dramatically outpacing gold, similar to what it's doing right now. Now, we can see here as well, taking a look, for example, at silver to the S&P 500. Very clear trend here formulating silver outpacing equities. Along with this as well, we have gold that we can take a look at as well. We can do these ratios with commodities and individual stocks. We can see here we broke out. We had an ascending triangle similar to back here how we had a long-term technical pattern. And now as we pulled back and equities were having a good few months, gold has made its support and is now looking like it wants to leap higher towards equities. Again, both assets can go up. But it means that likely if gold continues to grow here, that gold is outpacing the broader index of stocks. Now, I've talked a lot about price action, right? This is one thing. Obviously, the price action looks good. But putting that aside for a second, why is it that right now you'd want to be bullish on something like Bitcoin or altcoins or gold or silver? And that's a very fundamental question. And I think it's a fair one. And it really has to do with what the market's telling us. If you take a look at the yield on government treasuries in the United States, specifically the 10-year, uh, you can also take a look at the two-year and different time frames. We can see here that yields are dropping back down to where they were back here in April and May, or excuse me, in March and April of 2020. And they're looking like they're going to break down to new lows. So what does this tell us about the current macro environment? What does it tell us when yields are down like this? It tells us that the market is sending clear signals it is taking a confident bet that the Federal Reserve and other central banks across the globe, more specifically the Fed in this case, but this applies for practically all bond markets when their yields go down, it means that central banks are likely going to be reducing interest rates. They're likely going to be continuing to stimulate the economy by printing excessive amounts of money and buying up different types of financial assets in order to keep the financial system afloat. We can not only see this in treasury yields, but we also see this in the CME Group's uh, basically analysis of the FedWatch tool here that analyzes the probability of Fed interest rate uh, policy. So we can see here that all through, well, you can doesn't matter if you take a look at the July, September, November, December, January, or March bets here going into March of 2021, all of them assume that the Fed is going to be remaining at the current interest rates that we're at. But again, I don't think there's much of a feature here, an ability to actually take it negative. So again, keeping this in mind, we're either keeping it 0% where there's no cost to capital, or as the yields are showing us, as we've been seeing a long-term decline here, historically, we take it here to the three month here. So each of these candles represent three months, going back since the 80s, during the peak, right? We are now down here towards 0.58% on the 10 year. The significance of this and the continuation of this decline, the channel for the decline in yields, cannot be understated. And we are very, very close to breaking a historic new low, not only down to 0%, where, let's keep this in mind, you're not only putting up your capital to buy U.S. Treasuries that will pay you nothing, but in the end might end up penalizing you. This is absolutely insane at the end of the day, guys. And again... Federal Reserve showing this. I mean, if you if you want to take a look at history, right, as a macro trader, what's the general trend of central banks? Assets are going up. What's happening in the short term? Assets are going up at a record pace, at least the assets in the sense of what the central banks own. And this is, of course, inflating assets higher. So all in all, again, if you aren't paying attention to markets right now, if you, for example, were focusing on crypto back in December of 2017, it's time to start learning a little bit more about what's going on, guys. I know many of you out there already understand what's going on here, and it might be redundant at this point, but this is the time where things are starting to move. The liquidity is shifting. We are seeing massive moves here on the daily and the weekly and on the monthly here. Look at Ethereum's price here over the last two days. Biggest upswing move since back here in May after already continuing to make higher lows since back in 2020 at the beginning of the year and looking like it's shaping up for an even bigger cycle here. Altcoins as well, starting to shape up. If you've been in the right plays like Kava, RLC, a Band Protocol, outside of that as well, a variety of other DeFi plays that we've been talking about and covering on the channel, oracles like Chainlink, you've been doing very, very well in this market. So again, it's best to position yourselves, guys, all in all with what you think is going to be moving in the long term. But again, 
You'll have to make those decisions for yourself. Just know that you guys can always come here if you want to keep up to date with what's going on in the market. Now, I want to take some time real quick to just thank you all for watching the video. If you liked it, drop a like. Consider subscribing if you haven't. I think this is a profound time where it's important to keep up with markets. And if you want to make sure you don't miss another video, hit the bell icon. Again, I usually don't like to recommend that too much, but I think this is a very important time to keep up to date with what's going on in markets. And if there's anything interesting or exciting, you all know we're going to be talking about it here on the channel. One last thing as well, this video is made possible by our sponsor, Amaton. Now, for those of you who don't know, Amaton is a decentralized marketplace that allows you to exchange gift cards peer-to-peer. -peer. They're originally a company based out of Japan, but they've been working on a decentralized model for this business practice. So if you guys are interested, check them out at amaton.io to learn more about the project. That all being said, though, guys, this is a really exciting time. And I have to say, what's gotten me extremely confident, I've already been looking at what's been going on with Bitcoin and other places, or excuse me, uh, with altcoins and Ethereum. But seeing Bitcoin above here, after so long, it's been a very, very long period of time before we've seen something truly optimistic outside of just you know volatile up moves and down moves in Bitcoin. It's so exciting to see it here. And the funny thing is, is that people probably care much more about this move or the downward move. This is what I care about because we've been building a very clear wedge here. It might just be time to finally see Bitcoin moving up to the upside. And I'm extremely excited to be here with you in this journey. So if you haven't again, See you all in the next video. Definitely uh, leave a comment down below as well if you have anything that you want to share. And uh, for those of you who watched the last video, many of you might not get this, but for those of you who watched the last video, no worries. I got my mojo back. All right, everyone. I hope you all are doing well wherever you are, and I'll see you all in the next video. Stay tuned.